Well, welcome to another episode of Licensed RGs, and this episode will be covering WWF vs. WWF. WWF vs. WWF is a freely available Sim RPG Maker 95 game that can be found on RPGMaker.net. It was created for a 5 hour contest. As such, this game is extremely short and suffers from one serious bug and isn't officially licensed. But I decided to throw it into this series anyway, since it uses the likeness of three wrestlers and the logo of both the World Wrestling Federation and the World the Wildlife Fund. Story-wise, WWF vs. WWF is extremely lacking and basically talks about both organizations going to court over the trademark WWF. Well, after the court decision was handed down, the World Wrestling Federation wasn't satisfied and sent three of its wrestlers to a wildlife preserve owned by the World Wildlife Fund in order to give those endangered animals a smackdown. After all, there will only one WWF and it's up to these elite wrestlers and endangered animals to decide who is more worthy of those initials in one epic final showdown. Gameplay-wise, WWF vs. WWF is a turn-based, grid-based, tactical RPG that uses a combat screen similar to that of Fire Emblem, which is to be expected considering the program that was used to create it. Though outside the joy of having a new tactical RPG to play, the game is rather weak in terms of execution for a variety of reasons. One of the most glaring faults is the game is way too easy. Most of the enemies are unable to touch you throughout and will easily allow you to clear out entire areas using only one character, let alone three of them. Outside of the fact that you'll rarely get damaged, you'll also have way too many healing items, but I will give the game credit for making the healing items slim gems. After all, you should step into those, right? Another issue is that the game is entirely lagging in terms of movesets. In fact, each wrestler only gets access to one special move. The real kicker is that you can't enter the hassle at the end of the map and are entirely dependent on Brett Hitman Hart and his ability to send chairs long distance in order to beat the game. Gradually speaking, the game is alright. I haven't played enough games created using this program to judge it properly, but it seems sort of what you expect from one of the Fire Emblem games on the Game Boy Advance. Now, I'm not exactly expecting a graphical masterpiece considering this game is created using an RPG Maker program, but the only real negative to the graphics is that one of the specials looks a bit weird, but I'm hard pressed to pin down exactly why it looks off. Soundwise, the game is extremely limited and just reuses the same song on endless loop for the main game. And while the song isn't that horrible, it does start to grow old rather quickly. Outside of the background music for the main game, there's also a song for the short story section delivery and the congratulations screen. Outside of those three songs, the game also includes a few sound effects, but they aren't anything special. Considering this game is programmed in 5 hours or less, it's easy to understand why it's a mess and desperately needs more attention. It feels more like you're playing a beta rather than a finished game. Though despite the fact the game is incomplete, it is rather enjoyable. I guess there's just something inherently laughable professional wrestlers giving bears, gators, and porcupines a good old-fashioned smackdown.